Hello there. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some concepts that I know the psychology and chemical dependency students are interested in, which is tolerance and dependence as they relate to essentially substances that affect the brain. You'll notice that I'm not using the word addiction, which is an important difference because the two concepts of tolerance and dependence are related to the actual physiology of the body. And addiction is more related to somebody's actions associated with it. So you'll learn about addiction in psychology and in sociology and when you learn about behavior. But I really want to stick with the physiological concepts. So first of all, let's make sure we know our terms. So tolerance is something that happens when a substance has a different effect the second time around. So what tolerance essentially means is that the first time you do something, you feel an effect. If it's a good effect, you're going to want to repeat it. But the second time around, the same thing you did doesn't produce as good of an effect. So maybe the first time that you do it, it produces this kind of effect. And the second time, it only produces that much of an effect. So what are you going to do? Well, most people are going to take more of whatever it is or do more to try to produce the same effect. And then the next time it's going to take even more to produce the same effect and so on and so forth. So that's tolerance. Next up is dependence. And dependence is related to how much you need something based on what happens to your body. So I break this down into two concepts. So there is psychological dependence, which means that you feel like you need it. It made you feel good, which is a neurotransmitter reaction. So you want to feel good again and you want more. Versus, and this is important, a physical or a physiological version of dependence in which not only do you want more, but if you don't get more, you have actual physical symptoms that can be similar to withdrawal. So now let's relate these concepts to something that you definitely know. So most of the time people are fairly familiar with basic drugs. Drugs make you feel good by producing dopamine, which dopamine makes you feel good. So you want to take more of it. You have a psychological relationship to that because you want to feel good, so you take more. And since you're becoming tolerant, you continue to take more to feel good. You have a physiological relationship. If at that point, your body gets so good at producing dopamine from the drug that it doesn't want to do it any other time. So normally your body produces dopamine regularly. It could do it for lots of different circumstances. When you exercise, when you learn something new, dopamine is great, but your body becomes reliant on the drug. And therefore, if it goes away, your dopamine levels drop, making you feel pretty much like junk. All right, now, now what I want to do is relate these to an article. So we're going to think about the scientific validity of the article as well as the validity of these terms. All right. So ignore all of this ad stuff. This is what you get on the internet. The whole concept of this article, the title here is, I can't stop eating chocolate. So this person is essentially suggesting that she is addicted to chocolate. Rachel Evans says she is addicted to chocolate. So where are we finding this article? First of all, it's talking about addiction to chocolate. Well, well this article was published here in... Let's see where we are, the dailymail.co.uk. For those of you who don't know, the Daily Mail is essentially a paper. It's probably pretty similar to the New York Post if you know the New York Post. So, you know, that could be interesting enough. But anyway, it is not a scientific article. It is a news article. So that means we need to keep an eye out for all of our important scientific concepts. Where's this information coming from? And does it make any difference? So as we look through, it talks about this person, how she eats chocolate, how she eats amounts that would make others physically sick, 
which I don't even know how much chocolate that would be. I love chocolate. Chocolate is amazing. Um, so she has no self-control and it is totally addictive. All right, so let's see what else we have here. I'm looking right now for any information by an actual scientist. So far, I don't really see information from a scientist. I just see information from her. It says that they introduced her to therapists, but that doesn't give me any other information. And it says people seeking to overcome addiction, but it doesn't give me any information about that. So from a science perspective, I don't know. There's not really a lot of data here to tell me if somebody could actually be addicted. But now let's use what I know to make a pretty good assessment of the concepts. Can chocolate be addictive? Well, for it to be addictive, obviously this person has the behavioral stuff, but let's think about the physiology. First of all, it would have to show tolerance, which means that this person would need more and more and more. Does it sound like that? She says that she has no self-control. Uh, she just feels guilty for not long, but then she eats it again. And her attempts to give up chocolate have always failed. So it does sound like she is mostly at the point where she can't just have a piece of chocolate and it feels good. Like, I can eat a piece of good chocolate and I'm set. I'm set for the rest of the day sometimes. Maybe two pieces. But, and that's what I want. So tolerance is probably a thing. It doesn't take much to become tolerant to things. Your brain adapts to stuff very, very fast. So that's possible. So now, now let's think about, well, does chocolate actually affect the physiology of the body? Now, I don't have any science for this information, so I need to actually find out. So does chocolate affect neurotransmitters? Let's find out. So the first thing, of course, I need is a good place to go. And, you know, I'm not sure I love all of these links. Oh, but this one is a .edu link. And this one is a .gov link. So let's give these a try. All right, so this is the neurological benefits of chocolate. And it gives a recipe for chocolate. Let's see if it has any information about it. Ah, see now this does back relate and this person does cite. So it says our knowledge of chocolate affects how our body begins. And it says it works with serotonin, which we might remember makes you feel pretty good too. And tryptophan. And it has the capacity to affect our levels of dopamine. So if these things are true, then hey, that's pretty good. Let me check this person's references. Oh, hey, these are some pretty good references in some cases. So... This one is Smithsonian Mag, so it's a .com, but it's from the Smithsonian, so that's not too bad. This one is an actual journal article, so the influence of tryptophan and serotonin on mood. So, so far, not too bad, but not the best. I wonder if I could find a better option by going somewhere different. Ah, if I go to Scholar and I say chocolate and maybe dopamine. Let's see what we find. And now we're getting someplace. Oh, so for this one, Journal of the American Dietetic Association says chocolate, food or drug. This is a pretty good article. Oh, somebody highlighted this one. So it says, let's find something useful. Can chocolate be classified as a drug? Because it has some biologically active compounds. Well, I want to know about that. So I'm going to scan through here and see what I can find. It does seem that chocolate relates to behavior. And I really wanted to know if it relates to dopamine. Oh, so let's see if somebody has said dopamine somewhere in this article. Oh, here we go. At physiological doses, it may act to potentiate Dopaminergenic neurotransmission, I don't know about that. Has a dopamine reward system. Yep, so far it's a little bit hard to tell. So it might. Chocolate might actually affect your brain. 
I'll tell you, if you keep looking, you do find some evidence that it does, but not like a lot. Like it doesn't really make you that super high. I mean, chocolate makes you feel good, but it doesn't make you feel that good. But you probably do want it. So, so let's think back to our concepts. So what were our concepts? We have psychological dependence and physiological dependence. Does chocolate make you feel good like you want more? Probably. Could somebody become addicted to wanting that sensation of chocolate? Probably. Does chocolate produce an effect where it produces neurotransmitters in your brain and your brain gets so used to them that if you take it away, it doesn't work? Can you have withdrawal symptoms from chocolate? This one seems maybe a little more complicated. It doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence that chocolate produces a very strong neurotransmitter effect. So I don't know. I like chocolate a lot, but when I don't eat it for a little while, I don't usually like get the shakes or something. So it's probably not a physiological reaction, but it could still be a psychological one. And that's how you would uh, look at this concept and relate it back to something that you've seen.